Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul, never lets me go. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul, never lets me go. He rules the world with truth and grace, and may Nations prove the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well. No tongue can tell joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul, never lets me go. Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell joy. Unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul, never lets me go. If you've been following along with us, you know that we have been reading through the four Gospels as a church. Um, and we are about to enter uh, our fourth gospel, the final story of the telling of the life of Jesus. Um, have any of you stopped and wondered why there are four of the same story in the same Bible, but each is a little different? That's because the four gospels are written by four different people for four different audiences in order to emphasize four different aspects of Jesus. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what those are. 
Matthew opens with a genealogy because it is written for an audience of Jews who are familiar with the Old Testament, with the Old Scriptures. Um, so there's an emphasis on Jesus being the promised one, the Messiah. So think uh, son of David. That's who Jesus is presented as the greatest king um, in Israel in the book of Matthew. Then we move on to Mark, which opens with Jesus' adult ministry, so completely skips his birth. And that's because it's written for an audience of people who would be living in Rome or a Jew who would be unfamiliar with the Old Testament or the Old Scripture. So the emphasis is on the actions of Jesus as a servant of God. So when you read Mark, think son of man or servant. And then Luke opens with the birth of a baby. And this is because it's written for the Greeks, the non-Jew or the intellect. So there's an emphasis on the humanity of Jesus. So when you read Luke, think son of Adam, because Adam was the first human. And then finally, we've begun John, which opens completely different than all the others. John is the only gospel who was uh, an eyewitness. So this is the only eyewitness account of the life of Jesus. So in a way, it's written for everyone. And the emphasis is on Jesus being God. So as you read through this last gospel, think son of God. So for those of us who are familiar with the story, which I feel like many of us are now that this is our fourth time reading it, I think it's easy to lose the marvel of the idea of God dwelling with us here on earth that God put on humanity and walked in his very own creation. And so I love Advent, which is the season that we're walking through uh, before Christmas, um, because it's when we get to rediscover the mystery of the truth of God with us. So to, this uh, message is going to be a little different. I'm going to take us through um, the story of God and his people, um, a very brief uh, sprint, if you will, through the Old Testament and um, read it in correspondence with John, um, the last gospel that we will be reading in the next few weeks. Um, and so I want you to close your eyes as I take you through this abbreviated story and intermingle John in the Old Testament because I want you to picture Jesus there with God in each of these verses. Jesus was there in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now the earth was formless and empty, Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus was there during the shared tragedy between God and man, the fall of humanity. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Jesus was there when God saved humanity from utter annihilation through Noah. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living thing that was with you, the birds and the livestock and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus was there when God established his covenant with Abraham to become the people of God. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. 
I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a man's will, but born of God. Jesus was there with God in the pit and the prison and the palace with Joseph, whose position saved the people from famine. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father has placed his seal of approval. Jesus was there with God, who heard the groaning of his people as slaves to Egypt. And God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus was there with God who spoke to Moses through the burning bush. There the angel of the Lord <clears throat> appeared to him in the flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that, that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice nor seen his form. Jesus was there when God parted the sea and delivered the people from the Egyptians. And the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians. The people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. They saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus was there when the people were wandering in the desert and God sent manna from heaven. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they follow my instructions. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And Jesus was there when water came from a rock in the desert. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus was there when God spoke to Moses on the mountain, giving the Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. I know his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say, just what the Father has told me to say. Jesus was there in the tumultuous early nationhood, the times of battles and kings and judges and prophets. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Jesus was there with God in the building of the temple and in the loss of the holy city. It was because of the Lord's anger that all that this happened to Jerusalem and Judah, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. And then in the 400 years of silence. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for my God, my Savior. My God will hear me. So with you, 
Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This God of all these wonders, of all this history, of all this faithfulness, he came and dwelt among us, which is why we call him the second Adam, the second Moses, the great high priest, the judge of the living and the dead, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the light of the world, the root of David, the lion of Judah, our redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob, a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the Prince of Peace. Communion or the Eucharist is crucial for the people of God because it reminds us that the God of all creation so freely offers us himself. That is the mystery of the incarnation, God in the flesh, and that's the true magic of Christmas. This God of all creation who has every resource imaginable and unimaginable to us at his disposal who parts seas and walks on water and still storms and crumbles walls, chose that the very best comfort in all the universe to give to us was himself. So as we walk through holidays that look different, where people are maybe missing from our tables or we gather in soup kitchens because our needs aren't being met and sickness feels like it's everywhere, where so much seems out of our control and hope seems so far off. We can cling to the presence of God dwelling among us and know that that is enough. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Here in the power of Christ. 
as we close out today and we go back into the world and we jump back into the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season and we worry about if we got enough stuff to stock, to stuff stockings and if we have the right food and what are we going to do because this year is so much different with COVID and we find ourselves in this weird hustle and bustle and struggle inside of our heads, don't be frustrated. I want you guys to know that this baby Jesus was the thrill of hope that we were all waiting for. That this God incarnate changed everything. And we have hope and joy because of that. And that's the reason for this season. So I pray that as we go into our communities this week, as we do the things that we have to do, that that light will shine and that the thrill of hope that we see every day will be something that our neighbors see. And they will question us about it and ask, and that we can answer them and gain friendship and reveal truth. As we go into this season, we wish you guys the best, and we wish you guys prosperity and peace. So as we go, be blessed. Be that light to the neighborhood. Shine so hard that thrill of hope, and let everybody be influenced by what God is doing in your life. Peace be with you guys. See you on the street.